Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Angel K and in today's video, I want to talk about what I've learned since moving back home. So for those of you that don't know, I lived in Atlanta for about three years and just recently I've moved back home and I've learned so much that I just want to share it with you guys. With the first thing being that this is the biggest one that moving back home is not a sign of failure. Like that was one thing that I was always afraid of. I was like, there's no way I'm moving back home. I don't care if I gotta sleep in my car, if I gotta stay with a friend. I'm like, I don't wanna move back home because in my eyes, I was thinking it's such a, a like a backwards movement. Like it just feels like I'm not moving forward. I'm not progressing in life. You know, society puts all these expectations on you, which we internalize, especially me. And I'm feeling like, okay, I gotta do this by that age. This is what I wanna do. This is how I'm gonna like get there and do this and do that. And I've just learned that it is not a sign of failure at all. If anything, it's really, if it's needed, it's needed. You know, there's no reason to ever feel like you know, you got to have a certain image or a certain life or pretend to have certain things put in place. Like if it's not there, it's just not there. And it's fine. Like as long as you're still moving forward in other ways, you don't always have to have certain things together. You know what I mean? If you have to like focus more on your career, on your relationships, on, you know, just like getting yourself back to where you need to be financially. I just feel like why not move back home save some money especially for me that was my biggest thing it's like i really thought like moving to atlanta i was going to progress my career and i was going to do so much but i did in a sense but at the same time it just wasn't it wasn't where i needed to be another thing too is like when you look at america a lot of kids are maybe not pressured some some families definitely are pressured to move out when they're 18 but a lot of children just want to like they're like oh once i turn 18 i'm moving out i'm getting my own spot da, da, da. and that's maybe more so because of toxicity and like trauma and all the different stuff that happened within families where you just want your own space and just to live alone which i understand that was me too but with other cultures when you look at like india or like hispanic culture you know, so many different other cultures will actually live with their parents, with their entire family, grandparents included, aunts, uncles, maybe not aunts and uncles, but like, you know, it's just an extended family that all live under the same roof, a big house, and they don't move out until they get married. So of course, like a man, once he gets his career together and he gets money, he buys himself a house, he finds him a wife. The same thing too with women. Once they find a husband or once the husband finds them, they move out and they move in with the man who has the house. I feel like with American culture, we got all these apartments, we got all these like, and to me, it's just like a little bit of a disconnect because of course, like, you know, you have the rich white families, you got people with a lot of money, people who go to college and live on campus and they can afford certain things. But why do we put that pressure on ourselves? Another reason too why I moved out, it wasn't just like to meet any expectations because I had pressure or anything. I needed to get my mental health together. You know, like I mentioned before with like toxicity and stuff within the home, that was a big thing for me. I really felt like I needed to just be alone. I need to get myself together. But the second most important thing that I've learned since moving back home is that community is important. It's so important to have community. It's important to have a support system, people around you that you can rely on, depend on, not in a codependent situation, like a codependent way, but more so if you need something, you can call on certain people. I just feel like within our community, we lack that. And of course, it's because of the structure, the way this system is built. People grow up in broken homes and people are constantly trying to just make it and survive day by day. I know social media, people put on a front a lot, but like there was a time period and even still now, people are constantly talking about, oh, if somebody does this, cut them off. If this person's toxic, cut them off. 
ghost people. This and that. Like, there's nothing wrong with ghosting people. That's another video. I'm going to talk about another video because it's wrong, especially when you have a relationship or you have history with somebody. You should definitely never, ever just ghost someone. It's all these different things that people are just saying is okay when you're just avoiding accountability. Like to just walk away from something or to cut somebody off. It's not even just about like who you might meet in the future, but certain people that come into your life are very valuable. When you have a connection with somebody, when God puts somebody in your life, like they're there for a reason. Like you have to be tapped in to really understand that and really value it, appreciate it, and not damage the connection. People will literally cut you off for like the smallest thing, especially when everybody's talking about, oh, they got a red flag, this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, nobody's perfect. <laughs> nobody's perfect. When I had first moved to Atlanta, I kept the distance from my family. I still called them every so often. I still spoke to them like especially my dad when he was still alive, I spoke to him every chance I got. I would get off work and call him. I still spoke to my mom, my brother. I still kept in contact with my friends, but there was still that distance. And there was that distance because when it comes to people, you need boundaries. And that's what I feel like a lot of people need to learn. You just need boundaries with people. That's what I learned. You can't, I used to cut people off too. I would cut people off. And I'm just so glad that I have people around me that would understand and and still like give me grace in that situation and not take it to heart. But I've learned that when you're constantly drawn to a person, you cannot, you can't fight the feeling. You just can't. Like it's not a soul tie. It's not even not just romantically, like friendship wise or family wise, especially when it comes to family. Certain situations, don't get me wrong. Like if they're abusive, if it's literally like, like you just, it's unfathomable. Like you can't, you can't take it at all. It's, the relationships are unmendable. I can understand certain situations, you know, with like SA and stuff like that, like, okay. But sometimes certain things can be worked through and you gotta have boundaries. So when I had moved out and I was living on my own, I was just learning like how it is to really be independent, to live on my own, to take care of myself fully. I was working two jobs. I was meeting different people. I was just putting myself out there and just doing everything by myself. I needed that, you know, to fully understand who I was and what I wanted out of life. And also, understanding what role I play within my family dynamic. Now, between my family, there's just a whole bunch of chaos. It's, it's, it's a lot going on. When I was in the middle of everything in the past, I couldn't focus on what I need to do. I couldn't, I just couldn't be productive with everything that was going on in the house physically. But now that I'm back, it's still like, I know how to deal with certain situations better. I know how to like handle myself. I know what I need to do for myself in those situations. Just learning my coping mechanisms, learning what I need to be happy, satisfied, and like help myself, like regulating my emotions. All of that helped me when I moved out. So now that I'm back, I can, you know, share that information and I can help my mom and I can help my brother and I can, guide them and like help them figure out their coping mechanisms help them you know find what they need to emotionally regulate and just share my tools because i went through that and now i understand so yeah that's another thing being independent um just being independent within the community that you have i feel like to have a, a well-structured community you need to have of course your family i feel like family is so important even if it's not your blood family, you gotta have like a family. You gotta have people you call family, you know? Then you have your friends, a partner. That's another thing too. I feel like a partner isn't necessary, but like we as a generation gotta stop acting like we don't want love. We gotta stop, like, I don't think you should be desperate and I don't think you should, you know, take whatever's thrown at you just to say like you have somebody and just, just to say you're in love with somebody. No, I don't think that at all. But I do think 
that we got to be honest with ourselves. It's okay. We're human. It's just nothing wrong with wanting to be in a romantic relationship. It's just figuring out who you are and finding a person that you want to be with. The last thing I'm going to say is I definitely think when it comes to people, you have to learn to compartmentalize. That was something I struggled with so much. I used to feel like I wanted one person to be my everything, not just romantically. When I would have a friend who I just felt like, oh my gosh, like we're best friends, like we're so alike, we're this, we're that, like we're gonna be best friends forever. I would wanna just be with them all the time, hang out with them all day, every day, like, and I, it's okay sometimes, but it can be a little bit much and that can kind of drown the um, connection. So compartmentalizing people is very, very important. Like having people for different things, you know, for me, especially, I feel like my family is a good support system. When I need something, I can call on them. If I need a place to stay, obviously I can call on them. And I know not everybody can do that. Not everybody can move back home. So I'm just, I'm so grateful for that. I'm so glad they accepted me with open arms. I mean, I've never done nothing to them, so I, I wouldn't understand why. That's what I can say I go to them for. And then for my friends, of course I have different friends for different things. You know, you have friends that you go out with, you have friends who you can vent on the phone with, you have friends that you can travel the world with, you just have friends for different things. And then for a partner, I mean, a partner is more complicated, but just different people for different stuff and not making one person everything or expecting your friend that you go out with to listen to you vent on the phone. They're not always gonna be that person. Maybe they can. I mean, my best friend's like that, I'm grateful for her, but not everybody's gonna be that way. Not everybody, like I like having friends I can do business with. I love having friends I can do business with, but that's not gonna be the same friend that I travel the world with. You know, it might not be. You just, people are so different. I think you just gotta appreciate different people for the different qualities they have and not try to put them in different places or different boxes that they don't belong in. With every relationship, I feel like it still needs to be reciprocal. I'm not talking about transactional relationships by any means. I just feel like every relationship, there has to be that reciprocation and that mutual respect for each other. Um, so yeah, just all in all, I just feel like community is so important. We have to, we have to have people around us and not just like in our immediate circle, but like, as as a a bigger like culture as people in general as humans we need to learn to protect one another and really care about people because at the end of the day i do feel like every relationship needs to be mutually beneficial on both sides and people need to learn their needs and boundaries and then communicate that with the people around them and and build that community and you know people that you could build a future with and plan stuff with and all that stuff. So that's really all I had to say. I just really, really, I needed to get that off my chest and I, I wanted somebody out there to hear it. If you know, this is something you've been thinking about or you agree, let me know in the comments. Like, I just feel like it's just such a lack of community nowadays. And um, I'm, I'm glad, I'm sorry, my bangs is just, <sighs> I'm just glad to have the people around me and I love them and appreciate them so, so much. If you're like me and you can be very independent at times um, and just like want to do everything on your own and, and be isolated, because I can be a little isolated sometimes, I definitely don't recommend. I think just having community is just so important. Having supportive people around you is so, so important. So definitely taking that time to, you know, bond with people, build those relationships and nurture those connections with the people around you that truly love and care about you. So yeah, that's all I had to say. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you feel like there's a lack of community nowadays or if you've kind of gone through this as well, let me know. And if you've moved back home too, let me know your experience. Like, what has it been like? Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.